Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Random Nerdy Shit. Um, there's a mistake in that title. It says episode three. This is actually episode two. Um, and I promise nothing about facts. Uh, episode two was supposed to be with uh, Mass Mateo. Uh, but, um, you know. All I promised was emotionally based opinions. Yeah, it was supposed to be with uh, Mass Mateo, but, uh, you know, professional stuff happened. So essentially he got, you know, he's really busy and whatnot, but he did say that uh, he will be on episode three. So this is technically episode two. Um, so, yeah. Um, how did you like the new, this is the first time you've seen the title screen and everything. Yeah. How do you like it? I like it. When are these episodes going to come out in October? Uh, no, the first one comes out on Friday. Uh, well, well, this is episode two, so we're actually next. This is actually who, who made the 20, title screen? It's already the twenty second already. So the twenty on the fifteenth, right? So this is already aired. <laughs> so it already aired. Um, but um, yeah, no, you like it though, right? Um, you know, for, for 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 everyone in the podcast, you guys can't see it, but you have to go to our YouTube channel. Uh, there's a new uh, title uh, music, title screen, title every uh, title trailer, and then our um the background for our um for our show it's a little bit different now too as well it's a nice change isn't it Lewis? i like it yeah even my lights change my, my light that's... my lights in the background change too as well it's not it's now uh green so dark in there for no reason so i need to decorate it but you're the, you're i always feel like your room is the most unironically room. equipped for maximum lighting <laughs> and you don't use none of it now so, now i think the reverse happened where i can just do this and it really yeah. annoy the piss scent out of you it doesn't actually it's uh yeah you should do that that's nice man look at that no oh, God. <laughs> like some... i emphasize the parts of my skin that i probably shouldn't have <laughs> they put some neon lights in there and whatnot oh but, god uh... no you're gonna see like <laughs> it's like, still so basically where i am right my skin yeah, so basically where I'm right now is in California. So it's a little still brighter. It's about 6.37 p.m. here. And Lewis, you're about like 9.37 p.m. Um, so it's still brighter in here because the sun doesn't fucking quit in California. Bro, for today was hot. Yeah. So. I've there, There's rare times where I say like, because I acclimate to weather really well. But I was already sweating in my legs. And I'm like, this is a thing? <laughs> this shit happens oh my god <laughs> like it was it had to have been over the hundreds in like by the afternoon yeah. which is normally the cool time yeah um the background's not gonna be permanent by the way lewis so oh. um as uh Why? as this we are nice. speaking as we are speaking right now it's prime day it's prime day today is i don't it? know if you knew about that lewis it's prime day what, what, um, what, what are the sales? Well, I, for me, I bought like um, I, I bought like three things. Um, Is I there knew... any exercising equipment? <clears throat> yeah, there's a bunch in there. So yeah, what, okay. what I bought oh, is um, I what I bought is that uh, yeah, what I bought is a new uh, podcast boom mic. So uh, so it's not always like this. So it's a lot more freehand. Um, and then oh, it's so not you a... got one of those things where it kind of comes out like yeah, here and then yeah, like, yeah. It's from the ceiling down, right? Yeah, I'm gonna have an arm, yeah, yeah. So it's a, okay. a podcast arm. And then I bought myself a table. Uh, I'm being down. Actually, I'm being down to you. Why is everyone asking me that? Uh, I'm being down to you. Because it's it's so. Let me explain it. Because the the standing table is like the new hotness of tables. It's the in thing. And okay, it adjusts first, itself up and down. So yeah, in first, case you, you're you tired of sitting down, which is an actual uh -huh. thing, uh -huh. to be more productive by standing and doing work, you have that option with the standing table. Actually, that's not a new hotness. I did that for three years when I was working in Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's, it's called we don't standing. Have, when I was working in Silicon Valley for Solar City, uh, I was a project manager. I was, I, was, um, I was a project manager for the Northwest northwest of the united states so anything from portland i'm uh, sorry seattle all the way down to just above reno uh no just above california i was in charge of like getting those solars up so i had like three screens at uh, three screens and a standing table and a standing chair the chair that you know when you have a standing table you don't even sit down at all you just kind of prop yourself in there 
but you're just standing the whole time. It is the, the reason for standing is because it's it's good for blood flow because when you're sitting down, you, your blood flow tends to slow down. That that's why you get tired. Uh, but when you're standing, your blood flow is a lot better to your legs, and you're always awake, kind of thing. So, um, but no, I got myself like um, an L-shaped table because I'm announced to you because I don't know I don't know if you know about this, Lewis. Since I moved here in Cali, the table that I'm using is the same plastic table that we used at the store when we were prepping the books. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I that's why you, I didn't know you like dismantled it. Yeah, but that's why if I do this, watch this, okay? You're like watching? If I if if I shake it like this. Oh, it is tape. <laughs> it's, it's so tape. it's so oh, fr- by, by the way, by the way, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny you should say that. I am currently on an L-shaped table. Yeah. I like I had like unbeknownst yeah. to other people. I used to do medical billing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't 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 ask. That, I, that is I'm the most like... ironic. That's the most ironic thing ever. You used to do medical billing. You. Yeah. I I made sure that the hospitals make got paid like the insurance companies paid. Uh-huh the hospitals uh-huh. the bill that they sent the uh the medical claims yeah, so I know, basically i made sure that the any milkman. patient didn't have to pay more uh-huh. and i made sure the insurance company a hundred percent paid yeah that's a pure lies i'm gonna call lies on that oh, okay you're, you're the person who asked for more money. They were like, oh, so how much is our copay? You're like, well, I did my best. So your copay is only $500. Of all, I don't have evil too. <laughs> they were like, uh, your, your copay is $500. They're like, you're, you're the devil. You're like, listen, I did my best. <laughs> I did my best with this, all right? Um, but yeah, so I got myself an L shaped table. Um, and then. So many unironical files all over around me. Yeah, and then and then I got Sam a couple of uh of baby wipes and all that, and that's about it. Uh, we might get like a dining set or something. I don't know. Uh, but you know, um, Prime Day. I'm looking to get some weights. Get uh, Lewis, get uh, get a podcast arm because the podcast arm that I got is only forty five bucks. It was like nah. it was like forty five percent off, dude. Nah, that that still sounds too expensive. I'll wait until it's eight dollars, used, maybe broken. Needs okay. new bolts. Lewis, you're the only person that I like speaking to in Miami. And for some reason, when you say shit like that, it it's brings like, back. Uh, that, it that's, brings. That's it brings the back. That I hate. It just brings back the cheapness in Miami that I fucking hate, man. Like, man, I even Prime Day can't make shit cheap enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Prime Day couldn't even make Bro, <laughs> cheap enough for Miami, Prime man. Prime Day, it. Like it wants to be Black Friday, but it's not cool enough. <laughs> Even if Black Friday hits, like Black Friday has been, like the w- w- it gets worse every year. <laughs> every year they like they give you less sales on shit you actually want, uh-huh. and then they make it rather than a a sale day. It's like look at these new releases, and you're like, I don't care about the new <laughs> releases. Give me. <laughs> 80% off a 60 inch TV. Uh, oh, yeah, you can buy like monitors there too. The monitors, which are is insane. funny because if you want a giant TV, don't wait for mm-hmm. Black Friday, just wait until the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. I think that I think that sales in the United States just all about TV and like monitors because yeah. the monitors in there are insane. It, it, it made me want to buy a monitor to make it like. Uh, so that I have like a second screen or something. I don't know, man. But it's just. It, I I do agree that when you increase in monitors, your brain gets more and more stimulated over time, so it becomes harder and harder to go minus one monitor. See, when when, when gamers have monitors and like um, anyone who streams have monitors, I mean. Your, your here, here, like it, over here, the main well, game here. Well, it's, it's, it's odd though because they, they usually would have three screens, right? They would have one for the chats and then they would have the main one and then the for other gaming. one is... And then what's the other one? What's the, the other, other one's one? to maintain... Like, like 
the back end maintenance, right? So if your square is like right here in the bottom, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. something important, then you go yeah, to the yeah. screen and I it's like, it. does this look good, guys? Are you happy with this? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Any adjustments yeah, I get, I they need to do for their screen. Yeah, I got it. Because the same thing would be if I were to get another screen, I would get, I would have a main one in front of me and then I would have like the back maintenance one. But why do you really need one for a chat? Like just have an iPad with that. Like why? No. Uh, because At this point, it's just probably for aesthetic. easier for them to have a bigger screen, mm -hmm. unless they have a setup where like they could see like on the mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. It's like they can change stuff up. But in the end of the day, you're gonna need a second screen because you don't want it to be on your main screen distracting you what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You cannot have the chat screen right next to the management screen because that causes problems by like. You can click on the chat and it's like then you're just annoyed and you're going back and forth so you basically just have everything separated and if you're big enough you can afford to have the extra yeah. screens um you have a regular job you can afford the extra screens <laughs> here's what i'll tell everyone too as well uh, just a reminder the first episode for random dirty shit season two is already up to now as well it's with uh suzy creates uh it's one of the best shows that uh that i've recorded to as well um essentially we were talking about um, i can tell you all about what happened to us uh so she's like this amazing cosplayer that does like all the armors and all the weaponry for like one of the top cosplayers out there so cool. essentially the way i described her is like she's like kanye west she's a blacksmith she, uh well they call they call it a foam smith because she works with foam. Oh, it's right? foam. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Over the years, cons and cons got less cool. Yeah. So, so essentially, what ended up happening is that her day job is actually she's a geologist, right? She's a geologist for uh, for an oil company. Now, before you think that that's bad, go ahead and take a look at the episode because for forty five minutes straight. We talk nothing but geology. That's like the most randomly nerdy thing that you can think of. We're fucking talking about rocks. And she'll definitely give you the insight on, you know, there are some people who are against um, oil companies and whatnot, and they have every right to. And then that's completely fine. But what they're protesting uh, about is completely different. They're protesting about the most archaic way of getting oil where the way that most companies now or some companies now the way they get oil is the most environmentally safe ever it's like it's not even funny uh but go ahead and go uh, click on episode one of random nerdy shit there with uh suzy greats and then uh the next episode after this is going to be with mass mateo and then we're going to try to see if we can get uh, laney fanny too as well um so lewis i was uh i was uh when, when uh, before we started this episode, I was uh, I was texting you. I said, "Hey, I sent you the link. Let, let's get this started." You said that you were taught, you were, you were watching. I wasted three hours of my life watching mm. a live looped video for the live event of uh, what we do in the shadows. So, what is uh, for people who don't know? What is what we do in the shadows? It's basically a vampire documentary. <laughs> so, so it's essentially it's basically take the office but make it more with vampire. Um, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But except that it's in an office, it's how would vampires that are roommates interact with each other, and how do they interact also with the living? Right, right, right. Are they yeah. food? Are they allies? It's it's essentially the day to day life of a vampire. Yeah, but uh, more, their, but more their the rig system of getting familiars from other humans that are willingly to do all the nonsensical chores that they don't want to do anymore, right, in the right. promise to be converted into a vampire. Yeah. So essentially, the pitch for this uh, for this show, if uh, for most people who don't know, who was the creative mind for this show? I think at least the co-writer was uh, Taika Waititi. So he is the not just the writer, but he's also the show creator too as well. So one, of uh, them. yeah, well, yeah, but he's the one who's being, you know. But he's the most uh, well-known and yeah. most popular of these of all of them. 
So, uh, so I can only imagine how he pitched this, <laughs> this show to somebody. He, he went inside the room. He said, hello. Didn't make eye contact with anybody. Took out a piece of paper. Started folding them. <laughs> I would like your permission to make a documentary funny film about Ben. They're like genius. <laughs> this is why we hire you. It's like you've done so it again. You done it again, ass? Tiger. No. Uh, it's like you've done it again. <laughs> Did you hear this? People just bring out champagne. So, so the reason why I stop you from uh, uh, telling me all about what's going on and what uh, or whatnot, because I was gonna tell you that. Um, there is uh, there's somebody I know that's uh, that's on that show. Uh, at least it's somewhat regular, but not like regularly there. It's like yeah, it's like there, here and there kind of thing. Um, my soon-to-be brother-in-law is in there, so. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not. I don't like him. Um, okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound like my problem. No, no, it's not. But I'm just letting you know that. Yeah, I ha I have because like you were telling me, he's like, have you heard the show? I don't think you've heard the show. I'm like, I've heard the show, man. I, I didn't say have you heard this show. I was just wondering if you've seen the show so I can yeah. talk to you about it. And if you haven't, I don't want to spoil anything for you. No, you know I like spoiling stuff, man. Doesn't well, well, yeah, I keep forgetting that you're you're that hill to die on is a very particularly <laughs> like opposite. Hill. You know how you call me a, a like a general contrarian general contrarian what do you mean like you like i have to argue against you every time well you do all the time even though you agree with me you're just like mm, no 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 this? not all the time i agree with you on some things and when, when i agree with you i agree with you no you don't don't fucking lie <laughs> um, <laughs> but this one you're really being a contrarian on it <laughs> which i can respect at the very least i don't like the boy that's the thing. I don't like the boy. So. I mean, he'll he'll eventually watch this. Uh, what, watch this? <laughs> I doubt it. Even if they did, I don't, I don't fucking care. Yeah, you care a little bit. No, I don't. You're just gonna go up to him. It's like I was kidding. I did it for the show. <laughs> you me. No, I don't really fucking care. I don't really care. But it's a good show. Um, uh, that good that show is actually pretty good. It's actually pretty funny. I just never really got into it. I, I got into his other show in H if, on if HBO. If you really like British dry humor, I think like kind of like the original Office, not the American one. I think you really mm -hmm. enjoy this, but, like mm -hmm. just show, just in general, it's really nice. I like his other show on the uh, uh, HBO. HBO. Um, what? No, our flag means death. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. pure joy. It's, it's like the most amazing thing ever. Like. <laughs> it got to that point where it's like, who's gonna play Blackbeard? I will play Blackbeard. You know <laughs> why he does TV. you know why he does that, right? Why? So, so he can be eccentric no, or so, more eccentric. No, so Taika, every show and every uh movie that he does or he is an executive producer of, right? He gets to he be in his own show. He has a clause that he can put any character in there and that would be him. Oh, in this contract, I mean, it's yeah. kind of amazing how he gave himself acting roles without ever needing to actually need to like interview himself for it and all this. Shit. <laughs> well, so so this is this is how the interview went. I I should find that interview. I should show you. But he was talking about um, for Love and Thunder, right? Um, they were they were talking about it. And essentially, uh, he was talking about the character Gore, because uh, he's Gore, right? Or Gore, Gore, yeah. Gore, Gore, the, the, Gore yeah, yeah, whatever, he's, the rock yeah. guy. Yeah, he's Gore, right? So when Disney first hired him for uh, Thor uh, Ragnarok, they're like, oh, his contract states that he has a clause in there that he can make up any character and actually redirect a certain storyline any way that he wants. Blah, blah 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 and disney's like i don't fucking care do it right so he added gore in there right and they're just like oh he put himself in this like he can put himself in the movie if you want to see right he goes i don't think disney uh 
understood Un- understood my co- like i don't think they understood my contract pretty well because now with thor love and thunder there is like a whole fucking movie of just <laughs> it was just gore <laughs> right so he's uh, just there standing right next to him he's just there. no if you see love and thunder uh he is like one of the main characters in that fucking movie man oh that's lovely uh so in uh um on this hbo show uh he cast himself as Blackbeard, so he is actually one of the main characters there as Blackbeard, man. He is by far one of my favorite characters, though. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't it, like the the funny bit about him being a writer. He can literally just ad lib a bunch of stuff that he thinks it's funny yeah. and then just go with it. The funny thing is that I didn't recognize him in Green Lantern, and he was in the, he was one of the main sidekicks, and uh, he was the main sidekick. In you Green mean Lantern. the computer guy? No, man. He was uh, Ryan Reynolds' best friend there. The guy, the first guy that he revealed the green suit. You don't remember. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. You don't remember that? That was him. That was it. He just had short hair and he's younger. I, I think and he had my brain literally committed like yeah. a black bolt. Yeah. He was in Green Lantern. Not much people knew that. But here's the, here's the thing about Green Lantern too as well. So... So just uh just just to elaborate on Green Lantern, um, you know, on the Multiverse of Madness, did you see those reports that came in that said that Black Bolt suit as well as the Fantastic Four, Mister Fantastic suit were CGI? Yeah, they they were never there. They were never there because like it's just budget wise, it's just cheaper to generate uh their suit rather than make their suits kind of thing. Yeah, so, why make a suit that they're only going to ever use one scene for? And, and they were just doing a cameo, right? Here's the funny thing. Is that thing is being praised nowadays because there's a lot of Marvel stuff that has CGI suits that you never knew they had CGI suits. But yet, when Ryan Reynolds was the first one to do it, everybody panned that fucking movie. But if you rewatch, if you actually rewatch Green Lantern right now, is not as bad as it looks the only bad thing is is the villain why is the villain a cloud that's the only that's it, the only my thing. same argument with um fantastic four number two the second one where galactus was a cloud yeah see fantastic four the second fantastic four rise of silver surfer should have been a warning sign for green lantern (laughs) it was a good movie it's just that the main villain is a fucking clouds which makes no sense and how but but the thing is lewis and, and everybody else listening and watching you have to realize during that time if you were to do a comic book accurate of what a villain looks like what uh, 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 what Galactus would look like, and uh, wh- who was the one in um, who was the one in, in in Green Lantern, the one who yielded the yellow, the yellow, the yellow spectral? I forgot his name, but but if you were to do those, it it doesn't look aesthetically good during that time. Okay, how can you computer generate a fucking a uh, huge godlike creature, right? Now, wait, hold on. Now, you th- if you're thinking about it now, you're like, well, fucking the Eternals did it. It looks fine. Uh, no, but the Eternals had like current technology. Like, yeah, no, but th- here's the thing: they could still do that back then. But if you look at the Eternals and you release it during the time of Green Lantern and the time of Silver Surfer. And you see those fucking giants looking, look, holding a planet. You're like, what the fuck is this thing? It's you cannot do a, a comic book accurate because back then, everybody wasn't uh, wasn't demanding uh, I mean, comic were... comic. No, like they weren't they weren't demanding comic book accuracy on the movies. They were demanding realism. Well, now they're demanding accuracy versus realism. Because if you remember, if you remember Brian Singer's X Men wore black suit the whole time and when they did an interview on him they asked him why didn't you do a comic book actor they said if you have those bright costume in movies it's gonna look so bright and tacky but yet nowadays when you actually have them they're being praised because it's comic book accurate it's just the time 
it's also, just the timing I, I is just not they right. They figured out how, which materials to use, and it wouldn't contrast with the cameras. Yeah, it just didn't. It just, it just, it just shows the time. That that's all. Yeah. That's all it is. If you can Lan- stamp it. Yeah, if Green Lantern was what it came out today, the exact same Green Lantern, and then they have instead of a cloud, they actually have a giant fucking insect, which it is a giant insect. People would praise it. Green Lantern would be an amazing movie. It would be one of those movies that would be like, you know, great. Again, it's kind of like Sega. It's kind of like Sega Dreamcast. It was way ahead of its time. Green Lantern was a little bit ahead of its time when they just said computer generated suits. Nowadays, everything's fucking computer generated suits. You know what I mean? And then I mean, now it. And then it, nowadays, I, I, it's like I truly believe if those actors didn't have to put in those like really in- incredibly tightening suits yeah uh i think they'd be happier that's why chris evans was like would you ever come back to the mcu he's like i'll come back to the mcu he's like as captain america he's like no man fucking sam wilson is captain america if i'm gonna come back i want to do uh um, um Nick Fury's Johnny job. yeah this <laughs> is like he's like i want to do a fucking human torch again man that's what he said that's literally what he said he wants does he human really want to be johnny blaze again he, he, no, Johnny Blaze's uh thing, Ghost Rider. Oh, uh, does, Ghost Rider. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he wants. Dude, it's, it's, Johnny. Johnny, it's Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm. God, I'm so stupid. So, so he wants. There are two Johnnies in the Marvel. So he wants to do it again. If he does do it again, it's gonna be people are gonna praise it. But then they're like, "Well, why is it retarded back then?" You know what I mean? So, um, um I don't it's just uh, like, the, the execution would have just been poor. Hmm. It's just a sign of the times, man. That's all. That's all it is. I think Fantastic Four needs, uh, needs to. If they do a multiverse of like Fantastic Four, and whatnot, and you have Jessica Alba and everything in there, he'll be praised. He'll be definitely praised. Like if you look, like you should look at Spider Man, Andrew Garfield Spider Man. When Andrew Garfield Spider Man first came out, everybody hated it because, to your point, like you said it before, Lewis, when we talked about it, he was a cool Spider Man, and Spider Man wasn't cool. Like he was, no. he had like the skateboard and everything. He pretends to be cool under the mask, but no, he's not. He like no, he pretends to be nerdy, but no, you're a fucking cool Spider-Man. You know what I mean? So everybody hated it, but now everybody loved it that he actually signed a three co- uh, a three movie deal with them. Like what? Like what? Is, like I I understand, but like uh, is- time has a funny way of making people accept you. Time heals all. That's all it is, man. Time heals all. Time yeah. heals all. Uh, yeah. And it's and eventually, a newer generation is gonna like your movie. Yeah. Because that's what they were exposed to first. Also, also, you just reminded me of something. Speaking of all, okay, I was watching uh, Multiverse of Madness on Disney Plus. Right. Uh, if there are a lot of Doctor Strange out there. In the multiverse, like everybody has a uh, a counterpart. Mm-hmm. Can we agree that all from Zoolander two is actually also Doctor Strange? <laughs> like all is all. All is all, but can't get laid. <laughs> it's like all just married him, her, him, them, themselves. <laughs> I remember that man. All is all, man. <laughs> oh, so if you guys don't know, all is all. Go watch Zoolander two, and then. Or go to YouTube and just YouTube uh, all is all. And then, <laughs> and then you'll see what we're, we're talking about. <laughs> so essentially, it's like Benedict Cumberbatch, but you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. But um, what you call this? But what I wanted to mention to you, Lewis, right, is uh, our fav- our, 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 one of the favorite things I like to talk to you about is fucking Call of Duty. Um, uh, apparently, you all you ever talk about to me about Call of Duty is running, sprinting infinitely, shotgun, run. Well, uh, well, no. Uh, what I want to talk to you about, uh, uh, what I me- what mentioned to you about Call of Duty is how <clears throat> how he got really PC, uh, not PC, but just really got PG thirteen, man. Are you really still on that? You gotta let it go, man. I fucking hate it, dude. Don't. Just don't. Let, 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 let's talk about so, no, no, so, so here, any other want, game. Here, here's what I want to mention, though. You remember No Russian? No, man. I don't play the game. Okay, so uh, I'll describe to you what happened. So there was a there was a one cutscene that you... It's a playthrough cutscene um, 
that they made it skippable after like a month of releasing of Modern Warfare 2. They made it skippable because before you couldn't skip it. You have to play through it. They made it skippable. It's uh, a whole bunch of you guys. Like there's like five or six of you. You're an undercover. You're an undercover um, agent uh, right. for the CIA. Um, so you infiltrated this uh, international terrorist uh, terrorist, and you were in the airport. And you guys were carrying like a fucking M16 and like a whole bunch of like automatic uh, automatic guns. And then it was a bunch of Russians and you're in the elevator and then you were describing what's going to happen. They're like, remember, nobody, nobody survives, blah, blah, blah. And remember, no Russian. As soon as the elevator opens, they start shooting everybody in the elevator. Like as you as a character, you're playing through it. You have to shoot everybody, right? It made such a controversy that they made it skippable a month later. I feel like it loses... Uh, if you don't do something nowadays that are, if you don't do something that are PG thirteen, you're not going to be a game at all. Like no one's going to produce your game, even though it's critical to the storyline. Like no Russian wasn't wasn't just there so that you can execute a lot of fucking virtual reality game fucking characters Russians. or characters. Like it's not just randomly doing that, right? So it, it, it's critical to the storyline. You know what I mean? Now, now you're going to have like storyline is like, remember, be quiet. <laughs> it's like, remember, we have to blend in. It's like, so what? to give you credence for that, um, you know, the movie Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. They never mentioned the enemy's name where the fuck they were. <laughs> Oh yeah, and this it jacket, was right? No field, desert. Uh, all the enemies were never seen. There was always just we destroyed the enemy's uh, jet. We destroyed really? the enemy's tank. They, they never really? mentioned who the fuck they were fighting ever. No way, really? Go, go watch it. Then that was the fucking they, point. It, nothing. It was just like a, a oh, sexy movie. It was oh like watching God. Baywatch. The first, the first Top Gun was just like Russian this, Russian that, mix this, mix that. It's the, like that. That was the whole point because the Russians watch, had watch the, it, and all they say is like the enemy. Yeah, because like the whole point of Top Gun is that they have a faster plane, and you're the underdog, but you have the best pilot on the crappiest plane. That's pretty much what it was, right? Like yeah, everybody. It's, um... A technological edge versus just an edge in experience. Yeah. So essentially, yeah, because the first Top Gun was it's about the Russian MiGs. Uh, if you guys don't know, the Russian MiGs are basically these planes that are they're they're really heavy powered planes. They're very powerful planes, but they're not as quick. Where in Top Gun, the planes that they're flying, I think they were F-18s. I'm not quite sure or F-14s. Also, they'll never mention what type. Of jet they're flying. They never said F-14s or F-15s? Nope, you're not allowed to anymore. But they were flying F-18s though. You were not allowed to make a state what oh my God. aircraft you are flying anymore. Why is this movie made a billion dollars? Why did oh uh, never mind. For never gay mind. sex appeal. No, never mind. I mean, I like, uh, the first one was obviously showing you who's the power bottom. No, you pretty much. This one's gonna like this probably should be edited out. Well, I think I I, I kind of know now. It's because it's targeted towards fucking Gen Z, but also nostalgia for the older generations. Also, the older is, generations don't care about like you know whether is, you mentioned. There or also not. is like active wars currently happening, so you can't really make an enemy out of anybody. You can't make. Uh, one of the Russians war. because you know they're already unhinged as it is I mean, and you can't wars. make fun of the Chinese because then you miss out on all that Chinese money there's always active wars like the so, longest war but, right now is between the Palestinians so somebody and the... on Twitter for one of the Chinese companies that like lets you import in video games from America so that they the Chinese government would allow you to even have your games there Tencent uh, the, another one uh, it's not Tencent. Made no, no, no. a one of their social media accountants made a like a <clears throat> slight hint joke about Winnie the Pooh and their leader. Uh huh. 
And um, I don't think we've ever heard from that man again. And they're banned from publishing video games from then on. See, see, that's the thing, man. Like, you don't fuck with those people. You don't make, you don't make jokes. It's just so odd, man. Because it's like things that would make sense, you just don't say it anymore. Don't do anymore because it's just like, oh, you don't want to offend fucking people, man. I don't know, man. It's, it's just, it's just weird. It's just, it's, it's fucking. It's like the same thing with comedy, man. Comedy is fucking comedy, man. You know what I mean? Like, if you got make fun of the comedy, it's just all for fun. Let's not. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's my mental health." You know, fucking, it hurts my feelings. It's like, it's fucking joke, I mean, man. It's if joke. I was in a comedy club and the dude was roasting me like for half his skit, I would have just like walked up and they just left. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know that's a, that's yeah, a choice. Yeah, right, you have that choice choice. exactly that's that's a good thing about comedy right you can actually stay there and actually take it and laugh with everybody or you can fucking up and leave the same thing with video games you can either play it or yeah. you can just not go do you know what i mean frustration or you just like why are you why are Fine. you complaining why I'm are done. you com- yeah why are you complaining like oh they're shooting up people in the fucking video games and this and, this and that you know what i mean it's like, oh, my, my kid is playing this. First of all, why are you giving your kid a fucking first-person shooter game? Because parents don't care what they play. There's obviously our generation has played a shit ton of video games, so we would kind of figure it out, but there's still people just like our parents that like, I don't get video games, I don't understand them, but my child... The parents? Wants... The- Grand yeah. Theft Auto, and I've been in like GameStops. I were unironically helping people at some point. I didn't never work for GameStop. I re- I have a soul still. <laughs> I know they tell me um, just gonna work. Just gonna and some people it. just walk up to me because I always carry a bunch of keys on me at all given times, so everybody expects me to it's work just, there. It's just so freaking dumb because the same parents that complain about the they, violence. They told me like my child is looking for grand theft auto and i told them like you do know that this is a very violent game where you can fuck yeah. hookers for extra life right yeah and it's like oh it's that kind of game yes i'm not see, buying see, him that the, like, the, the, thank fun, you. the funny thing is that the same people who complain about the violence and the sex and all that stuff on like grand theft auto and call of duty and all that are the exact same people who goes oh you know we want our kid to explore things no and no and no I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll make a better analogy Um, The very same people that, like, I can't believe the government is stealing all my personal information. Um, I can't believe they're using all the information. It's like, but they're the same ones that tweet, like, I'm taking a shit right now. Um, I just look at, like, my house. Yeah. How nice it is. My address is this. I just give out all their information for free. I just think that, essentially, if you're going to allow your kids to play video games, um... you got and then you allow them to buy the video games that they buy you you are not in position to complain about how violent and how sexually active it is because it's not specifically for your kid if your kid wants that maybe as a parent you tell them don't get this video game maybe you know as a I mean? parent like you ask them like how do you spell that go online do a small google search and then watch a video yep. You know, you know that reminds me of. It reminds me of Eminem. Remember when there, uh, when Columbine happened, right? No. The Columbine High School. Remember Columbine, right? The shooting, the first oh, match. The I'm sorry, man. They, match. There's so many. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, so essentially, when Columbine happens, the the ones that they blame, uh, the government blame is movies, but the ones that they hammer down on is video games. Marilyn Manson and The Matrix. Those are the four, but those are the three main ones. The last three I mentioned, those are the three that they hammered through. And one of um, Eminem's uh, music, uh, um, uh, I Am What I Am, um, The Way I Am, sorry, The uh, the Way I Am, um, he mentioned that essentially when kids started to shoot up uh, shoot up everybody at the school the first thing that they do is blame Mar- Marilyn Manson where like everyone's like oh it's Marilyn Manson's fault blah 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 but like dude you're as a parent is you should be actually responsible for your child's well-being 
mentally and physically and emotionally. If you, if you allowed your child to break down to that point, either you weren't looking at the signs or you were just kind of negligent. Yeah. It, sometimes they're sneaky and then they act yeah. like they're all cool and all yeah. right. And then, yeah, but just, like still. As a parent, you should just you should just literally shelter your kids from things that you don't want them to see. That's the thing. Now, I realize I said shelter and most parents would be like, oh, you know, I don't want to shelter my kid. Okay, then accept the fact that if they want Call of Duty, you're going to see this fucking thing. If you don't want them to play that, then you shelter them away from that. Until you, know you what I feel mean? like they can understand the difference between fiction and reality. <laughs> Because that shit at a young yeah. age that blurs yeah. together. Yeah, exactly, man. That's why you gotta have to have like. That's why for me as an adult, when I play Call of Duty two and I go through no Russian, it's like you know you, you don't you don't go. Daddy's oh, not killing yeah, actual yeah. Russians. I don't hate yeah. them. You don't go. Oh, he wants to murder everybody. No, you come up to the guy and be like, dude, how rough was your day today? Pretty <laughs> rough, man. Pretty fucking rough. You know, so it's it's the same. The way you want to look at it is this: for gamers who are not as physically active in sports, their way of releasing a stress is shooting up fictional characters to people. Fictional, who, not so fictional. Yeah, to people, to people who are physically active in sports, they either go to a boxing ring and punch a punching bag or a sparring partner. Or they go to the gym and do all that stuff. It's not it both both ways is to relieve stress. And guess what? Those both ways that to relieve stress, either you're physically active in sports or in the video game section, none of them actually kill anybody at all. It's just a way to fucking relieve stress. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? But then when somebody shoot up to school, they're like, well, you know, you know, you know, you know why, right? Because you fucking go and uh, play fucking Call of Duty and shit. That's why. And like they, they look at like, uh, or if they don't play Call of Duty, they're like, well, he watches The Matrix and look at all the songs that he fucking listens to. Marilyn Manson and fucking System with Down and shit. Well, does he go to the gym? Because those are the kind of angry music that you kind of want to listen to when you're in the fucking gym. Not ironically, I listen to like death metal to relax. <laughs> Very relaxing for me. Yeah, see, there you go. So what if, like, what if, it like... It cancels so out all the extra noise all around me. What, what if, like, all of a sudden you become unhinged, Lewis? Right? Right. And then you, you start doing unthinkable things. They're going to be like, well, he listens to death metal. It's like, no, man. Oh, no, no, no. My, my killing music is Mr. Blue Sky, um, What a Wonderful Day, and I Like Big Butts. You know, you know, you know what you should be worried about is those people who are like around our age group or younger, and they're like, you know what that kind of music I like? Frank Sinatra. Those are the people that you should like fucking watch yeah. out for, man. Those are the most dangerous. I, I, ones. I get it. No, Frank Sinatra is great. What? What's wrong? Man, it, can, can you imagine? Why are you a Frank Sinatra hater. Can Can you imagine if uh, uh, that kid? Can you just imagine him listening to Frank Sinatra, right? Fly you know what? Me to the moon. <laughs> That's just killing music. That shit is scary. You know, think about it. Please. Or like Sam, or like Sammy Davis, or Sammy Davis, or something. You know what I mean? Or Celine Dion. Skies are blue. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just saying. Who's the guy that makes the uh, Toy Story music? <laughs> you got a friend yeah. in me. Oh my god. That... <laughs> you got a friend in me. And he sings it as he's like cutting you apart. I'm telling you, man. I'm... See? Those are the people that you should worry about. Or, <laughs> or worse off, it's like they don't even put music. They start just watching uh, Mr. Rogers. Like fucking people who like listen to Sarah McLaughlin. Like Eyes of an Angel. The eyes <laughs> of an angel. Uh, slow, slow motion. I'm proud like to be an anymore. American, cause at least I know I'm no, free. No, no, those, those people are fine. Those are people just racist. That's fine. Those at least, are those, people. at least those people shoot you. I, at least those people, you know, they're gonna shoot you, and they're racist. But I'm saying the most dangerous people are the one who listens to Sammy Davis, Frank Sinatra, Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, who else is there? 
Not yeah. Celine Dion. Okay. Those are just, those no, are just no, awesome no. people. Or Shakira. <laughs> no, it's not, not Shakira. I'm just saying, like, six Early Shakira music. might be a problem. Current Shakira. Okay. Like, anything from, like, the 50s and shit. 50s, like, baritone kind of songs. Do you know well, what the, I mean? The sick psychopath that listens to elevator music for fun. Like, all you, all you see is, like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that you're not only are you like suffering you're also annoyed oh man i'm, t- I'm telling you right now so um no it's just kind of it's kind of weird man because it just keeps popping up on my on my uh the on back my of xbox. your head no no my well in my xbox is saying hey you know what you should uh you should buy call of duty 2 now because you you'll be eligible for an open beta uh how about no every time that comes up i'm like t- i was like i'm talking to myself i'm yelling at the screen fuck no okay the open beta does not happen until september or october i have fucking three months to buy your shit all right stop and even then me. Do, do, do you really trust them to make an, an actual working game at this point no, no it will be working i'm just saying i mean not like, well because uh, because it's been two years since they're developing the game but i'm just saying don't advertise that you have an open beta and i'll be eligible for it when you don't have that open beta until three to four months from now like go fuck yourself like why you know what i mean i'm just i'm just saying you're frustrated with the current climate is this what happens of opinions this is what happens when you're up all night with a three month old and you don't really sleep and you have coffee thoughts goes in your head you know kind of like um i don't know, remember i told you that uh there was one time that i didn't get any sleep for about 36 hours uh, right right I, I forgot when it was um it was a few years ago i haven't slept for 36 hours and i told you you know who has a point lewis mafia Mafia boss, they have, they have, they yeah. Have I, right. I, I, I remember that. They yeah, remember I that? Think you're, I think Rachel <laughs> was very worried about you for a while there. <laughs> okay, okay, but hear me out. Okay, hear okay. Me out. okay no, hear me out. I no, there's no way. Okay, L- listen, what? listen. <laughs> This is the kind of fucking talk that gets us demonetized. No, no, no. But, but hear me out. Hear me out. I was watching Goodfellas the other day. Oh god. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You seen Goodfellas? With uh, Ray Liotta. I Ray haven't Liotta. seen Goodfellas in years. If I yeah. watch it now, it's going to be a whole new experience for me at this point. Okay, hear me out. These guys, okay. yeah, they're, mobs, they're, they're mobsters. Right. Yes, they, they kill people that owe them money. But unironically, they're very good for the economy. Yeah, but they never, but they never deal drugs. Something that, you know, everybody widely know that the war on drugs was actually about drugs and eliminating black people. But anyways, they never deal. Well, the cartels drugs. deal in drugs. The mafia doesn't. So so yeah, cartels not that not not that not the mafia. mafia. Yeah. The, so so essentially, the current mafia deals in drugs. So essentially, the the mafias in, in the Goodfellas, uh, they're just honest people who're trying to do honest stuff. But guess who comes in the way, taking their money, even though they didn't do shit all. Government man. That's okay. what they said. That's what they said. They tax them. So sure. essentially, I was, I was thinking, I was like, hey, you might be right. You so, know? so here's kind of like the flaw in that statement. If you're being taxed to do something, then it's legal. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, so the only thing, so you see, if, the only if thing they, is, if they yeah. pay their dues, yeah. the FBI doesn't care. So essentially, it's like this. Okay. Essentially, like this. If you look at it in the grand scale, okay. Right. It's only illegal because the government doesn't get a cut. Yeah, if the government gets a cut, you can get away with murder. <laughs> look at Amazon and Walmart and fucking uh, Tesla. No, no, no. And shit. Look at the uh, the op- uh, opioid uh, problem. Yeah, these people oh, yeah. killed. Yeah, I was watching Dope Sick too as well with Michael Keaton. Unf- yeah, man, abominable like yeah. amount of people, and they got them addicted. They're, this is still a yeah. problem. Yeah, they will not serve a single second. Yeah. None of his family will spend a single second in jail. In jail. Yeah. Not only do they have to pay this like kind of ridiculous fine, but they can pay it over time. So that mm. means, and they have so much money that the interest yeah. rate of what they currently own will cover for that and more. But in the same way too as well, you can argue that the reason why I think if you look at the underlining and the whole bit of it all, 
The reason why the government is taxing you that way is so that you don't get big enough and too powerful enough that they can't touch you. Because do you think do you think the government can touch Amazon? Do you think they can touch Walmart, the pharmaceutical company? They can't touch all those people. They have lawyers upon lawyers and lawyers. Their lawyers have lawyers and their lawyers and their lawyers. And their lawyers. I feel that you underestimate the actual power of the United States government. The problem is it's too beneficial for um, officials not to keep them around. The, 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 re, like the, the thing is, I think I believe if you look at the underlining of it, I guess, again, the underlining of it, the government tax you so that you don't become too more, too powerful. Because the thing about it is, Lewis, on the height of on the height of our comic book store, we had Steve Aoki in there. We had Scotty Young in there. We had Tyler Kirkham. We had Ryan Otley. Everybody fucking was in their store. Hey, Tim. I, would, I was getting taxed like a fucking motherfucker. Who was our first guest? <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Uh, so, <laughs> if, if you guys are wondering why. I live, <laughs> okay. Our first guest was Tyler Kirkham. Uh huh. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> so, if you guys are wondering. Only what, I know the true story to this question. So, and Ohenio. So, if you guys oh, are yeah, wondering. I forgot Eugene was there. That's so funny. So if you guys are wondering what he's uh, referring to, you'll never that, know. Is that uh, when we first started a store, we had. We had uh, I had a vision of uh, having artists in there, and mm -hmm. and if you look at if if you truly look at it, Lewis, your honest opinion from our first guest to where we end up with our last free comic book day, that's one hell of a fucking. That that thing. was that that was a, like an up curve. That that's one know? hell of a that's one hell of a glow up. That was, though, it was right? good curve. That was good curve. Yeah, that was a nice glow up. The only so, like you 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 were in business there for like only two years, right? Yeah, uh, three years. Three years. It felt like two and a half, but okay. Yeah. So anyway, so what ended up happening is that uh, we wanted to invite artists and whatnot and all that stuff. Um, I contacted Tyler Kirkham first, but he hasn't responded and whatnot. So, but um, our email or our phone rang and said that uh, there was this guy coming to Florida doing a tour and you don't have to pay for anything. He'll come to your store and does uh -huh. this. He said that uh, he's worked for Marvel for this and this and that and DC and all that. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're like, well, no, we're desperate for like fucking somebody. So sure, man, you can come over. I mean, you were, I wasn't working for you that closely at that time. Yeah. So our first signing, uh, and this is the only time I'm going to reveal this to you, Louis. Uh, I do remember it. I just don't remember uh -huh. his name. Uh -huh. uh, our first signing was uh, we only had eight or ten people that came. That's about it. And his signing was like weird because he had like a presentation like he's fucking like pitching uh, an idea at Shark Tank. That was a signing. And then he does some sketches. It was an art class. Yeah, it was like an art class. Um, that was a signing. It was like the weirdest signing ever. And then versus our last one that we did before I moved to California was like 480 people. Ryan Otley, Scotty Young was there and then all these people. And then Four, five, 480 people came and all that so it was like a bit it's a big glow up and whatnot we had steve Yoki and all that stuff um but we only had 10 signings and i still remember <laughs> i still remember uh drake bell was very successful yeah for a last minute one yeah yeah um I still remember. Can you imagine uh, if we had like a week to advertise that, man? <laughs> I remember you asking him for a sketch, the first guest that we had. Oh, yeah. He put the most mi like minimal effort, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, can you draw me Flash? It's like, all right. It's like, oh, do you want to put more lightning? Like, give me more lightning. Give me like, more lightning. You, you basically you gave were, me a rough sketch. You were so demanding to this man to do you a sketch i and wanted how, more and, lightning i paid for him and how much did you pay for you being a fucking karen about lightnings how much was it lewis i think it was like 30 bucks <laughs> if, if he was gonna bitch about the price i would have given him 50 bucks and tell him to shut the fuck up and give me more lightning gold man <laughs> it was it wasn't 30 dollars lewis it was 25 dollars no it was you 30. Paid him, i paid, you him, paid 30. No, you paid him 25 dollars and you he asked for 30. And you were bitching about not enough lightning on your It was not enough flash. lightning, bro. I would have paid him 50 bucks. Oh my god. If he just shut the fuck up. 
and gave me more lightning. <laughs> so just, just in contrast, how, how much the ske- the sketch was like wasn't a bus. It was like a full on full body flash. It was looks like, like it looks the, like he's running and everything. It was basically the outline. It was not very good. It looks like he was running and everything. All that. If you were to get that at say MegaCon from like say Tyler, he would have charged you like eight hundred dollars. This man for that no for that outline hell no no no, no, no. like this man uh this man charges twenty five dollars and this guy here was complaining that there wasn't enough lightning on that one yeah you'll never admit that he was the first signing he's never the first signing because because I I, te- I I I message just because you uh, don't Tyler. count it doesn't mean it's not the reality of the thing first off Miami taught ta- ta- taught me that all right. If you don't fucking admit pay it. attention to it or admit to it, it never happened, man. <laughs> that's that's the Miami way. So for everyone listening and watching, that's a Miami way of doing things. If you have something bad happening to you, guess what? If you don't think about it, it, it never, never happens. Really happens. It never happens. It's the that, Miami way. It's the my. This is the Miami way. It is the way. It, it is. It is the way. Uh, um, all right. Um, <clears throat> and also. You're never wrong. <laughs> all right, well, we're dragging this on too much now. But what do you guys think about all the all this violence and like video games, movies, and whatnot? They, no, like, I can't believe who, we jump back onto that bandwagon. You really is, gotta let go of it. Who is really to blame in here? Like, who is really to blame? Like, is it you, uh, or, or is it the parents? Because to me, it's the fucking parent or, or the company. It, to me, it's the fucking parents, man. Just be a parent and just fucking shelter I, your kids on I mean, shit that you don't like. That's all people I'm don't realize that like even if you look in the back of the box for the ratings do you want to know who gives those uh ratings mm-hmm. the companies themselves they are self-regulated <laughs> they can give call of duty pg 13 uh pg or mm-hmm. e for everyone if they so deem fit <laughs> i'm telling you man uh but yeah that's it for uh this week in there um hang on to um mateo's uh interview um that would be Episode three. This is episode two of. Uh, it will be way Lynch. more interesting than us just rambling on. About <laughs> uh, remember, you guys, uh, you can listen to this uh, podcast too as well. If you're listening to Spotify on this podcast, remember if you have Amazon or any other major uh, streaming service uh, for your podcast or music, we are there too as well. Except for Apple Music, we're not going to get into that right now. Um, but we are in every single one of them, and you can always watch this on our YouTube channel. Uh, just type in comics for promotions in there. Uh, Lewis, uh, any last words for anybody there? I lost a lot of blood today. Oh, we should we should get in touch with that like next time. <laughs> no, uh, I've I've never like you know those horror stories when you like you go to sleep and then you wake up in a pool of your own blood. Mm-hmm. All right, well we'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.